the channel. Hope you're doing well. So in this little video, what I want to do is um, show you how to do a filter on a repeating group that pulls data via an API. Um, so I think most folks are familiar with how to filter data in a repeating group when, it, when the data comes from uh, Bubble's local backend. But I do want to show you how I accomplish this when I'm pulling the data via an API. So what I have is two uh, repeating groups here. Uh, the first one is obviously local data, data from Bubble, and the second one is data that I access via an API called to back endless, which is basically just a um, no code slash low code uh, backend as a service. Uh, so they have data storage, um, cloud functions, no code sort of capabilities, that kind of stuff. So everybody, I think, again, is pretty comfortable with how to do filtering. Um, on the local data, so I've got my drop down here. If I select active, I'll only see active clients. If I select not active, only not active. And if I select all, then I'll see all clients. I want to be able to do the same things here. Obviously, I have nothing uh, set up yet. So let's go over to our editor. And again, you'll see this repeating group is uh, just search for clients, which is a local data type. Uh, this repeating group is currently tied to a data source which is an API call. So I've set the API up in my plugins. I'm not gonna go into how to do that here, but I just know that I'm getting this data via an API call. So I could set this button up similar to this one in that um, this button, the, the, to, pull the, to filter the data uh, from Bubble locally, all I've got is a bunch of actions to where when the dropdown is changed, I'm searching for clients uh, based on this is active property. And so I will only want um, clients uh, where is active is equal to yes. When I select active from the drop down, I only want clients where is active is equal to no, where uh, or when the drop down is uh, not active, when I select not active from the drop down. And of course, if um, I select all from the drop down. I just want all clients, so I'm not doing a, a search here. I'm just getting all clients. So that's how I've got the, again, the drop down for the local, uh, for the repeating group using the local data setup. Now, I could do something very similar with this drop down and just do a new API call, which filters based on the criteria in the drop down. However, I'll, I don't really want to do an API call every time I want to filter data. Right, so um, the way I'm going to approach this is the first thing I'm going to do is set up a custom state um, for this repeating group that essentially just pulls the API or, or performs the API call one time and saves that data to a local state. Um, so uh, if I go to my work group, I'm gonna set up a, an event for when the page is loaded to go ahead and set up that custom state. Um, so I wanna set a state I'm just going to set it on my index page and I'm going to set this to back endless all clients. Right, I'm just, I just want to pull all my clients um, from, from back endless via the API I've already created. So I'm going to do that. I also then need to go back to my repeating group and change this instead of uh, an API call. I just want to reference um, again, that custom state, all right? So let's go over to the app and make sure that I'm still getting all the clients uh, in my repeating group here. So I'm gonna refresh, there's my local stuff. Huh, so I'm not seeing everything, so let me just go make sure I've got everything set up in my workflow. And of course, I didn't enter a value here, right? So I still need to do my API call, and it's gonna be this API I've got set up. So that should solve that problem. So let's just make sure that we're seeing everything we expect to see here. Yeah, cool, okay, nice. So now I see all clients uh, via my API call. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is set up a workflow on this dropdown. And I'm gonna wanna filter the state I just set up to only show certain items based on the, the value of this dropdown. So I'm gonna um, start my workflow on this button. And the first thing I want to do is again set a state and the state I want to set is this all client state. 
Now the value I want it to be is actually the same all client state, but just filtered by um, filtered by the the value I've I've essentially set the drop down to. So the way I'll accomplish this again is I'll say I want is active to be equal to yes, and then I only want that filter to run when this drop down's value is active. Right? So if I select active, I want to show all, all clients that have the is active filter set, set to yes. All right, so let's see what that gets us. Okay, so I'll do my little drop down. Cool, so it's filtering by um, the, the clients that are only set to active. So let's add another one. Very similar thing here to, to do for um, the items that are not active. So again, I want the value to be this drop down, but I want to filter it by items where is active is equal to no. And I want this to occur when this drop down's value is not active because that's the other setting I have in my drop down, the other value in the drop down. Okay, so if I go back to my app, again, reload. So now I see not active. Cool. So the last one I'm going to do is obviously if I select all. So I'm going to go to element actions, set state. I want to set the value of the state essentially to the value of the state filtered by. Uh, actually, I don't need to filter at this point because I'm going to do all of the all of the clients. And I want to do this when this drop down's value is all. Okay. So let's reload this. Let's see what we've got so far. All right. So not active. Cool. Let me see my all. Huh. So what's the problem? So the problem here is actually when I'm setting in one of these actions, when I'm setting the, the value of back end lists, all clients, basically to itself with just the filtered values, I'm resetting the value of that state. So in other words, I've changed it from being all clients to only be a list of clients that are either active or not active. So then when I go back to all, I'm only going to show the value of, of anything that's been filtered if I select all after it's been filtered. So how do we get around that? So what I do is I set up actually a custom, a second state. And this state is going to be, again, on the uh, page itself. And I'm going to call this back in list filtered clients. And again, this will still be a, a get all client type, and it will be a list. So I'll create that. And then its value is actually going to be the value of the initial back endless client's state. So again, what I'm doing is an API call to set this client, or sorry, I'm doing an API call to set this state to all clients. And then I'm essentially setting the second state to all clients as well when the page loads, right? Because when the page loads, I want to see all clients. So I also then need to go back to my repeating group, change this to be the filtered clients, and let's make sure that when paid, the page loads that I'm seeing all of my clients. Okay, so I see all my clients. And then the next thing I need to do is go back to my workflows for the drop down for the filter and change something. So again, instead of changing the all clients state, I actually want to change the filtered client state. And I do want that to be the value of my back endless clients state filtered by the same sort of things. When the drop downs value is active, I want these to be filtered by yes. I, mean, I want to change again my filtered client state here when all clients is filtered by no, when I select not active. And then for this one, again, I just want my filtered client state to be equal to my all clients state if I select all from the drop down menu. Now, let's see if that is going to give us the behavior we expect. 
So I'm going to select active. Awesome. Let me select all. Cool. So now it is showing me all. If I go not active, awesome. All. Cool. So now, effectively, what I've done is I've I've enabled a filter. Again, that only requires one API call when the page loads. And then with a couple of custom states, I'm able to leverage a filter similar to, to the way I would if I was pulling data from a local bubble storage. So hopefully this answers a couple of questions. Again, if you have any questions about anything I've done, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if there are other tips or little tutorials you would like to see uh, in bubble, uh, feel free to leave those comments as well. Thanks so much.